what's up guys this is the brave 8 it's a brand new action camera from Akeso. we've got a lot to cover on this so i've got them all chapters down below as well let me go ahead and start off with unboxing and showcase some of the key specifications on this that have upgraded from the previous models pretty excited to showcase to you guys the capabilities of this so let's get straight into it in terms of the key upgrades Compared to the Brave 7, this has a powerful half inch CMOS image sensor in the lens now. You can also record 4K at 60 frames per second as compared to the 30 frames per second from the Brave 7. This also allows you to do 8K time lapse video, which I think is great. 16 times slow motion, just like the previous models, it has a dual color screen. And in terms of stabilization, this has something called super smooth stabilization, which has a setting inside, links very well with the Akeso Go app. So I'm gonna showcase some samples for that. And also it's waterproof up to 10 meters deep, which I think is absolutely brilliant. So it is waterproof out of the box. You don't need no special waterproof casing for that. In terms of the accessories that come in the box, you'll see there's a lot of them. And here's a quick screenshot just to showcase to you guys everything that's here on this desk. So take a look and pause the video if you want to learn more about all of the different accessories that do come with this. A couple of things I want to just highlight as really useful points. This does come with two batteries. One of them I have in the camera already. There's a spare one as well, which is great if you're going to do a lot of shooting outdoors, then you can have a backup battery just in case you run out of battery life. This also comes with a very nicely designed remote control so you can do your shooting, take pictures or take videos remotely from a distance. And as always, there's plenty of mounts here to cover any type of filming or shooting that you'd like to do. Okay, let's take a closer look at the design. So you can see it's very compact. It does follow a very similar design to the Brave 7 and it's very lightweight as well. So it's so easy to mount. Even if you have body straps, this you probably wouldn't feel it too much. And I think it's just a great thing to have. We have a screen on the front. We have a high quality lens. On the right hand side, you have your port here. If I just open this up, this is for the USB-C charging port and the memory card slot. Along the bottom, this is where you can open the compartment for the battery. On the right hand side, you have the mode button, switch between the different modes, so like video, photo, etc. On the top, you have your on off and display button, the shooting shutter button. And with that, let's go ahead and turn this on and run through the menu options. So there's a few swipes that you can do. Of course, you have your battery life and the memory card space left on the top left and the top right. If you swipe left, you can see these are the modes. You have record video, take a photo, time-lapse intervals, and then time-lapse photos. You can also change the resolution with the button there at the bottom. If you tap that, you can switch between 4K 60 frames per second. You can go to 4K 30, down to 1080, 2K, 2.7K. So, so many different options for all of the video resolutions. For every video that I take and showcase to you guys in this video, it will be at 4K 60 frames per second on 16 by nine ratio. You also have a few zoom levels. So if you tap this, it starts off with a super wide angle. You can go up to the next level, which is wide angle. Above that is portrait perspective. And the highest one is narrow angle. If you swipe to the left, you can see all of your media. You can go to a tiled view and then scroll through your photos and your videos. And then you can also play it back directly from here. So if I switch to photos, I'll showcase some of the sample photos that I've taken with this camera as well. And then when you swipe down from the top, this is your control center. You'll be able to turn on voice commands, your Wi-Fi, the brightness levels. You can lock the screen and go into preferences for more detailed settings. This is where you'll be able to turn on the control for the remote. If you don't want to use the remote, you can toggle that off as well. So you have general settings here at the bottom. You can go into that. You can see information about the screen brightness, the sounds. So plenty of things to cover everything you want to do with the device, including if at any reason you may need to factory reset, that can also be done directly from here. Now I just wanna draw attention to the voice control. This is pretty cool. So I'm going to turn that on. You'll see you can toggle it on from there as well. It's pretty easy to do. Here's a quick screenshot of some of the voice commands that you can use with this camera and I'm just going to showcase one of them. So I have this set on video mode and it's at 4K 60 frames per second. Okay, so I've just mounted the camera up a little bit higher so you guys can see. When I say the voice command, keep an eye on the LCD screen just there for the red recording button. It will turn on and I will stop it with my voice command as well. So let's try it out. 
Picasso video start. You'll notice that it's now started to record the video. You can see the red blinking light just there. So let me go ahead and stop the recording. Picasso stop video. How quick and easy was that? So plenty of ways to use voice commands to do different things with remote shooting. So now let me show you a little bit around the app as well. One thing to remember is if you wanted to see the super smooth footage, you need to download it from the app directly rather than watching it on the actual camera. Then it has the process and then you'll be able to see the full super smooth version. So let's go ahead, turn the camera on. One thing you always need to remember is to have the Wi-Fi toggled on. There we go, it's now on. Open up the Acaso Go app, go to device. For the first time you connect, you'll need to look for Brave 8. Just hit connect. It shows up the next time very quickly. Hit the connect button. Finalize the connect. There we go, connection successful. And now you're into the app. So here you'll be able to see pretty much all of the same things that you can see on the camera. One thing to note is when you do have the app connected, it will show connecting on the camera. So it kind of disables that screen, but you can press the mode button there just to get out of that and get back to the camera settings itself. It's pretty responsive. There is a slight delay. I'm showing you myself, turn left, turn right, and it works pretty well. In terms of the app, you have yourself the record and the photo mode buttons there. Of course, you still have all of the different options. So you can go into slow motion, you can go to time lapse and motion time lapse as well. And then with the photo, you can also do a burst photo, self timer, and time lapse photo. So the app does allow you to have more options and more flexibility of what you can use the camera for. If you just go into the settings, from here, you can change the image stabilization from off to super smooth. And then you can also change some of the other video settings as well. When you switch the mode to photo mode, the settings will slightly change to match the different photo resolutions that you can select. But it's all pretty standard settings and it works very well out of the box. If you go into your gallery, you'll find all of the photos and videos that you have taken. And I'll be showcasing all of these next. But just to highlight for example, if you wanted to download the super smooth video, here's one of the options. When you go to download, you get the option to select between standard and super smooth. And for most of the time, you will always use super smooth because that does give you the best footage. So now that I've shown you all of the things that you can do with the app, let's go ahead and take a look at all of the footage that I've taken with the camera itself, including using the app and without using the app. Okay, so let's dive into the videos first of all. Every video that I've taken is at 4K 60 frames per second with 16 by 9 ratio, so that is what I'll be showcasing. The first one here, I'm just walking down the country park and I don't have the super smooth stabilization on, it is turned off. This is just to showcase to you guys how shaky the footage is whilst I'm holding the camera in just my hand. So I don't have a specific tripod or gimbal or any selfie stick or anything like that. It's purely just in my hand to showcase to you guys how shaky it would be. So now this clip is the super smooth version. And as you can see, as I'm walking, there is quite a drastic improvement. It's not by all means as smooth as something like having the camera on a gimbal or anything like that, but it does make a significant difference if you do use this option. And here's another side-by-side -side comparison of walking without the super smooth stabilization and walking with the super smooth stabilization. Now let's do a similar comparison, but instead of walking, I'll be running. In any case, if you do run with a camera directly in your hand, even with the best stabilization in place, you will get some level of shakiness. As you can see with the running one, it is still a little bit shaky when I am running. 
So because I don't have a gimbal or any other tripod or mount that allows me to keep it a little bit more steady, that's one of the reasons why it is very shaky like that. But the next comparison I wanted to do is again, without the stabilization and with Super Smooth on, I've mounted this on top of my electric scooter. So I just wanted to ride down a path and see the difference between having that on my scooter, which is has a very stable handle and seeing the difference in the quality of the stabilization. Now again, I did pick a drastic scenario here by mounting the camera on a handle, but because the handle consistently moves as well, there's a lot of bumps and I was riding my electric scooter on a gravel surface, so it wasn't a completely flat surface to showcase how much of a difference the super smooth option does make. And you can see slight differences as well. I would say definitely don't use the non super smooth stabilization version of this if you are doing a lot of action activities or there's a lot of movement. If you're generally just keeping the camera in the same place and you're mounting it maybe on a tripod or something like that, then you wouldn't need to worry about the super smooth option that much. But having that as an option for the stabilization, I think has made a bit of a difference, albeit it's not the biggest and most shocking difference I've seen for a camera to switch into that mode. I still think it does a good job for most scenarios. One other thing I do wanted to check is if you mount this on your car dashboard, this actually works as a very nice dash cam. So here's an example video. I've just mounted it on my dashboard here and it does keep it quite smooth. And I did have super smooth stabilization on. And you can see, you know, as I'm driving down the roads, it feels just like a very good dash cam that you just buy on Amazon. And if you buy one of the car mounts for your windscreens that can attach action cameras like this, then essentially you can use this as a dash cam. So there's plenty of use case scenarios for having this and I think it's done a very great job. The next thing I wanted to test is the audio quality. So let's take a look at a sample clip. All right guys, so now I'm just testing the audio. This is used by the internal microphone on the Brave 8. I have super smooth stabilization on as well. I'm just holding the camera in my hand and showing you guys to see how smooth it is but also to see how the sound quality is. Now it is pretty windy today, so you might hear a lot of wind noise getting picked up by the microphone, but let me know what you guys think. Now I've used plenty of action cameras in the past, but I think with the Brave 8, they've made a lot of improvements on the audio quality. I found that to be very clear. I've seen a lot of sample audio clips from the Brave 7 and all of the previous versions of the Brave range and they've been very average, sometimes a little bit disappointing, but the Brave 8 just took it to another level. And I think if you do want to use that as a vlogging camera and you just want to speak directly into it, then as long as it's not really windy or there's very bad weather outside, or even if, especially if you want to use it indoors, you would still get decent enough audio quality coming from that. So I'm quite impressed on that front. And finally, I took a whole bunch of photos because I wanted to test out the brand new 48 megapixel camera and just to see what the quality is like because that is one of the standout features for the Brave 8. As you can see, you know, I'm pretty impressed. It's almost as good as a quality on some of the latest smartphones. I think it's done a great job picking out the details in the picture, the colors. It might not be as super sharp as some of the pictures that you might expect from something like the iPhone 13 or anything like that. But for the price you pay for this camera, I think you're gonna get a very good, decent set of photos if you do want to use this for photography. So my final thoughts, I think for the amount of accessories that you get with this, the capabilities of doing remote shooting with the remote control or with voice commands, being waterproof out of the box, taking this on holidays or any trips that you go on, I think is just the perfect camera to have. Now at the time I published this video, the camera is not released yet. So when I do get all of the latest pricing information and the links of where you can purchase this from, I will have that in the description down below. And if you are the person that just wants to capture every moment when you go outdoors, when you're on trips, or even if you're riding your bikes through some bike trails or you're hiking, so many different scenarios of why you can use this, I think it's a very great buy. 
So for me, it's a huge thumbs up. I'll have the link to the Akeso website in case you wanted to find out more information about their products, but do check back to see the latest link to buy the Brave 8 as soon as it's released and to get all of the latest pricing information. Meanwhile, if there's anything else you guys want to know about this new camera, then drop a comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you did like this review, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. I have new tech videos out every week and I've got cool gadgets just like this. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those videos and I will catch you guys next time. Take care.